Vinegarum. That's the nickname given to this little animal. Depends on where you live, you might see this little creature in your house every now and then, usually in your bathroom or perhaps basement. Many are afraid of these little creatures because they resemble scorpions. But how dangerous are they exactly? Well, let me bring up the question. What exactly is vinegaroon? As you most likely would have already guessed, vinegaroons are arthropods. Just like scorpion, they are chalicerate, and of course, arachnids. But yeah, the similarity stops there. Scorpion is its own order. Scorpion is, while vinegaroon is also its own order, Uropiki. By the way, this order was called Telephonida in the past, so if you see that name in an article, it's most likely talking about the same thing. Taxonomically speaking, vinegaroons are closer to spiders compared to scorpions. Why? Because they have two pairs of book lungs, hence they are classified in the clade Tetrapulmonata, which basically means four lungs, by the way. Anyway, Uropigi means tailed rump, because they have this thin tail-like thingy on their rump. Hence, they are called whip scorpions. I'll talk about the scientific terms in the morphology section. Currently, there are 18 family genera and 128 species classified in this order. Evolutionary speaking, their closest relatives are the schizomida, commonly known as prickets, or simply short-tailed whip scorpions. Why they are called that is very self-explanatory, because they look like whip scorpions, but their whip is short. Quite simple, really. Vinegarons are also closely related to the amblypigi, aka whip spider. Whip spiders are basically whip scorpion, but without the tail-like thingy. Okay, but why would it be called whip spider then? Well, that's because their front legs are whip-like, which, to be fair, is also the case in whip scorpions, so... Well, I'll talk about whip spiders when I make a video on them sometimes in the future. For now, let's focus on whip scorpion. Vinegaroons are called vinegaroons because they smell like vinegar. Which, of course, I'll also talk about that later in the behavior section. For now, what I want to point out is, there are actually multiple ways to spell vinegaroons. Some write them like this, some like this, and apparently, also like this. I think American English usually uses one R, while British English uses two R. Not sure about the one that calls them vinegarones though, but it was indeed used in some publications. The distribution of vinegarones is quite interesting because, first of all, vinegarones are actually native to the humid tropical and subtropical region, excluding Australia. So vinegarones normally don't exist in Europe. They don't like drier region, whether it's cold or arid. There is only one species of vinegaroon in Africa. The fact that they are limited to West Africa indicates they are relictual population. They might be more widespread million years ago, perhaps even dating back to the Mesozoic. Now, as far as I know, vinegaroons are not native to the northern region, which means Alaska shouldn't have vinegaroons, but I might be wrong. Perhaps it's green because the map maker just listed USA and Alaska is part of USA, so it's colored green. What's interesting is this though. The only thing that I can rationalize out of this is perhaps vinegaroons that were being kept as pets were released and somehow survived. But I'm not exactly sure. Do let me know if there is an explanation to this. Anyway, let's talk about their morphology. Just like other arthropods, their body is covered with exoskeleton made out of chitin-based cuticle. Just like other chalicerates, they have a pair of chalicerate, and of course, four pair of legs. Like I hinted earlier, their front pair of legs is elongated. This pair of legs is modified into antenna-like sensory organ. They also have a pair of large pedipalps, which I suppose is why people think they look like scorpions. Their body is generally divided into two parts, cephalothorax and abdomen. Or, you could also use the term prosoma and opistosoma instead. The last three segments of their abdomen are fused into a ring that supports their whip-like thingy. This thing is called flagellum. By the way, this flagellum is, of course, also segmented. This flagellum is equipped with bristles, 
aka setae. They have a pair of median eyes on the front and some pairs of lateral eyes, which admittedly is not exactly easy to see, especially if you just look at images on the internet. But anyway, next, let's talk about their behavior. But before that, Like I said earlier, Vinegaroon lives in humid area. They tend to avoid light sources, hence they usually burrow under soil, rocks, rotting vegetations, etc. And they are more active during the night. Vinegaroons have a relatively poor vision. However, their olfactory and tactile senses are good. Not only are their front legs modified as sensory organs, their flagellum is also a sensory organ. The setae on their flagellum help by increasing surface area and sensitivity. It can be used to pick up molecules. Oh, by the way, because their front legs are modified into sensory organs, those are not used for walking. Only six of their legs are used when walking. Just like scorpions, they use their pedipalps to grab stuff and dig. It's pretty handy for their life, quite literally. They are carnivores. They prey on other arthropods by grabbing them with their paddy pops and crushing them with their teeth. Oh, by the way, they also have teeth-like structure on their inner side of their paddy pops, which can help in crushing prey. And yeah, like I said, they are not venomous. Their defensive maneuver is spraying the secretion from the tip of their pygidium. You know, the base of their quote-unquote tail, basically. They have two openings on the tip of their pygidium. Inside it are a pair of long glands that can secrete acid. This acid is mostly composed of acetic acid and caprylic acid, which, if you didn't know, vinegar is around 4% acetic acid. So yeah, that's why they smell like vinegar, hence the name, vinegaroon. Oh, by the way, this gland doesn't have a muscular coat, which means the gland itself cannot contract. They need to contract the muscles on their back to spray the acid. However, this acid spray can reach a target up to 80 centimeters away, which is still quite something. And yes, I do say target because they can indeed spray this acid with a good enough precision. Still, it's not harmful for human, unless it goes into your eyes, which could be harmful if you just let the acid stay in your eyes. You could simply wash your eyes and it'll be okay though, so no big deal. There is also a case where itching and swelling occurs after skin contact with the acid. So yeah, avoid it if you can, but at the very least, it is not lethal. Just like most arthropods, they reproduce sexually. During courtship, male will grab the female's front legs. This courtship lasts for hours. It can even reach 13 hours in some species. After courting the female, male will deposit the spermatophore on the ground, and then the female picks it up. Sometimes, male will help by pushing the spermatophores into the female body. Female will stay in its own burrow while gravid. Many eggs are kept in a sack, which is still attached to the female. Female will raise their opistosoma as to not let the eggs touch the ground. You know, to keep them safe, basically. This will last for several months. After they hatch, spawns will stick to their mother, quite literally. Mother will feed its spawn until about one year where they first mold. Then they will leave the mother's burrow and live on their own. These are still not adult though. They mold annually and will finally reach adulthood after the fourth mold, which means they reach adulthood after four years. In total, vinegaroons can live for around seven to nine years. What's surprising for me about vinegaroon is the fact that people actually keep them as pets. I mean, sure, some people like to keep spiders and scorpions as pets, but I thought people do so because of the morbid curiosity. You know, because they are literally dangerous. Or at least, people thought they are dangerous. Well, I guess many people are afraid of vinegaroon because they look dangerous, so I guess it does fit into that category. I guess another reason why I'm surprised is because vinegaroons are quite common where I live. A vinegaroon somehow crawled into my bathroom every one to two months or so. So yeah, but when I think about it, Japanese also like to keep Pada orizifora as pets. 
and some reptile enjoyers keep gecko gecko as pets so i guess it is not that weird but anyway if you enjoy keeping vinegaroons as pets then do still be responsible don't just throw it away if you get bored with it or whatever your reason might be and if you hate vinegaroons or you are afraid of it let me reassure you that you can just leave them alone they can eat some cockroaches for you so it's beneficial in some way i do understand if you are bothered by its smell though since it can be quite strong but yeah i hope more people are aware about their biology and how they are harmless to us how beneficial their existence is as natural pest control and of course as a zoologist i would be happy if more taxa are discovered but yeah that's all for now oh by the way while I did say they prefer humid places, some species do live in the arid region in the Americas. Those can be quite big too. Anyway, enjoy your day.